Then we have this beta lactams. And when I say type 3 here, that refer to that figure where I had four different mechanisms. And type 3 was those that interfere with the cell wall of the bacteria. So all these do the same sort of thing. They interfere with cell wall synthesis in the bacteria. And if you look at them, they, they look pretty similar because it's, all of them has this four member ring and then there's, here's a five member, six member, five member. So they have a little bit similar structures. Again, these R groups that are written here, that could be a lot of different groups. And again, these groups are important for how the drug acts, how it travels around, toxicity, what sort of bacteria it will attack, and potency, how effective it is. If you just use one of them as an example, then what I've written there is one, two, three, four functional groups. And you see that most of them are described as essential. It means if I do any change in these positions, the activity just goes down. I kill the drug. It won't work anymore. So with this structure, it looks like I can hardly do any changes at all with it because then the activity will go down or vanish completely. This slide is just meant to illustrate. So why is the cell wall important for the bacteria? And if you think, um, if you go past a building site, you will see that when they use, make concrete to build a building, for instance, they put these iron bars in the concrete. And why do they do that? Well, it makes the wall much more solid. It makes it much stiffer. If you forget to put iron in it, the wall will start to crack after a while. And you will get a hole in it. And if you think about that image and say, here we have the bacteria, we have a cell wall in the bacteria, and we have something called a peptidoglycan layer. It's just a big polymer. If you imagine that that part is the equivalent of having iron in the concrete, if I make hole in this, the cell wall will not be stable anymore. Inside the bacteria, the pressure is much higher than on the outside. So if this layer gets weakened enough, the bacteria will pop. It will be destroyed. And everything inside comes out. So these beta-lactam antibiotics, they weaken the peptide lactam layer. And the bacteria dies because we get holes in the cell wall. If you look at this in detail now, no, there is no iron bars. But what I've drawn here, if you think about each circle, that's an amino acid, building blocks of all proteins. And then there is a sugar, and then it has a long tail. So this is very lipophilic. This is polar, and this is just an amino acid sequence. If you look carefully at this, you will see that there is a letter first. D, D, L, D, L. And that tells us what sort of amino acid it is, if it's of the D form or the L form. Now, the antibiotics I'm going to talk about, they interfere with this part of the molecule. And the way this is recognized, it's only because it's a mix of D and L in this sequence. Our cells in our body does not have a mix. We only have one type of amino acids, not L and D. That's how we receive specificity in this case. The antibiotic only interfere with this amino acid sequence because of the two types of amino acids sitting in it. If you think about this, this is an enzyme that the bacteria have. And it takes one of these building blocks. The square here now is this lower part here. These circles and the <coughs> color code is illustrated here. And since these are amino acids, the way they are linked together is always this sort of functionality in between them. 
It's called an amide. Now, to stabilize the cell wall, the bacteria would like to do this, to make a bond between one of these chains to another chain. It's called cross-linking. And what happens is that this enzyme, it attacks here, get this intermediate, then this functional group here comes in, kick this out again, and I go to cross-linking. So it's a multi-step sort of synthesis of making cross-linking, stabilizing the cell wall. The thing with our antibiotics, the beta-lactams, is that this enzyme, of course an enzyme can't think, but imagine this. It recognizes the antibiotic as the spacing between two of these amino acids. So this enzyme, this is doing its job over here, it attacks it. And I get this as a result. That means that the antibiotic is now bound to the enzyme. If the antibiotic is bound to the enzyme, the enzyme can no longer continue stabilizing the cell wall. So I prevent the bacteria from renewing its cell wall. And eventually that will lead to that I get holes in the cell wall and the bacteria dies. That's the simplified version of how all beta lactams work. Among them, you find things like penicillins and cephalosporins that are probably among the most common antibiotics we have. Probably most of you have tried that at some point. It's quite common to get that when you have a light infection. Then comes the problem. This is another enzyme, but it's an enzyme that the bacteria produce itself. And that enzyme does only one thing. It recognizes antibiotics and cleaves them. So the bacteria has a defense mechanism, which is the sign so that it actually destroys the antibiotics. That's not good because it means it kills the antibiotic before it can do its job. That the bacteria produce this is a part of resistance mechanisms. That's a big problem. A way we can avoid this is to think the following way. We have the antibiotic, and then we make sure that the antibiotic has a big R group here to make it bulky. Then this enzyme will not be able to come and see this amide bond and cleave it. So the antibiotic becomes much more stable towards the beta lactamases that the bacteria produce. Again, to figure out this was a result of structure activity relationship studies. You make a whole bunch of compounds, you test them and see what works. If you look at this, this is very similar structure. But now it's not a penicillin anymore, it's a cephalosporin. This you recognize as the enzyme that was doing the cross-linking of the peptidoglycan layer. And again, it recognized the cephalosporin as the bond between two amino acids in the peptidoglycan layer, attacks it, and we get this. And again, we trap the enzyme, the antibiotic is now attached. To the, peptide, uh, to, to the enzyme that's supposed to maintain the cell wall. Again, the result is we get hole in the cell wall, the bacteria die. And the last example I had was the, this group, which looks pretty similar. The sort of core of the molecule is very similar to penicillins, just some small differences. But you see, those parts that are essential, that are important, is the double bond. If I take that away, I will kill the activity. It will be a much worse antibiotic. It looks a bit different over here compared to the penicillins. So it means that this have 
the same reaction mechanism as other compounds we just looked at, but it's slightly different structure on it. So it's a variation of the same thematic thing. The useful thing of this is that we can use them on what we call multi-drug resistant bacteria. Many people get bacteria infections of bacteria that are resistant to penicillins. But it's not as many bacteria that are resistant to this type of compounds. So this is some kind of the last resort. If nothing else works, we try this one. 